microbiome. Well, most people, when they think of microbiome, of course, are only thinking about the microbiome in their gut because that's really the only microbiome that gets talked about at all. And the discussions around microbiome serve an incredibly lucrative purpose for the supplement industry, like so much of the advice we get. Most advice about drugs, about medicine, about <laughs> supplements come, come from the industry that benefits and profits from, from the sale of those things. But you have a lot of microbiomes in your body. You have uh, your gut microbiome. You have a microbiome in your mouth, which does tremendous things. It's very important for preventing tooth decay, um, gum disease, all kinds of other things. Beneficial, symbiotic bacteria that are partners, are partners of ours. And we would not live as well as we do without them. You have a microbiome on, on your skin. Every square inch of your body is covered with bacteria. And I've said many times the biggest mistake we make is in our germophobia and following the advice that you need to kill bacteria, kill bacteria. I mean, that's, that's, that's how it comes out. I got to kill bacteria. Well, you don't want to kill those bacteria. You may have noticed whenever you took a course of antibiotics, which you may have needed to kill some bad bacteria in your body, that you kill the good bacteria too. And usually it takes you three, four weeks for your digestive system to get back on track as the microbiome in your gut repopulates itself. So, of course, they've got probiotics to sell you. Not only probiotics, but prebiotics. They've got, I'm surprised they don't have postbiotics, which you dump in the toilet after you're done. Somebody, somebody, I'm surprised, hasn't invented that yet. We should not be concerned or have to be concerned with the inventory of what bacteria and what strains of bacteria and the ratios of one to another. We should not have to be consciously concerned about that because we can't know. We can't know. It's not our place to regulate or try to even influence the makeup of all of our bi microbiomes everywhere on our body. If we're healthy, if we're eating the right food, then the appropriate and correct bacteria everywhere will prosper. They will be fed. And the inappropriate bacteria, the ones that are necessary to break down fiber, the ones that are necessary to break down excess sugar and eat sugar, they will starve. And as nature does, they will diminish in population or even go extinct in your microbiome because you don't need them. You don't need them. Now, herbivores like cows, they need strains of bacteria to break down plant matter and fiber. And without that particular appropriate microbiome for a cow, they'd be sick and they wouldn't, they wouldn't grow and prosper. Humans, having been carnivores for so many millions of years, the correct biome for us is a biome that is very low in sugar and insoluble or non-digestible fiber. We don't need them. That's one of the prime things that's responsible when you first start carnivore and all of a sudden stop feeding all that tasty fiber and sugar to the, to the microbiome, to the strains of bacteria in your gut. They start dying. They revolt. They eat everything in sight. They eat other bacteria. They, they don't go down without a fight. And we get usually real bathroom adventures for the first couple of weeks. That is your microbiome automatically readjusting its makeup 
to the nutrition available to it. And you don't need to think about it. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to learn the names of all this bacillus and that bacillus. You don't need to consciously intervene. It is a natural thing and it happens by itself. So along with other things that I don't pay any attention to doing carnivore, like ketones, like microbiome, like this bathroom scale, like anything. I just keep it simple as hell. I take the few supplements that I take, the electrolytes, the vitamin D, and a couple drops of iodine, and that's it. And I take those because I'm convinced that they are deficient in the food that we eat because of our effects on farming and raping the land and taking those nutrients out of the soil or they're not being in the water that we drink. Remember, we evolved drinking water, pond water, any water, full of minerals, full of everything. And now we have filtered water, distilled water. So much of what we need is not in there, and that's why I take the electrolyte supplements. But as far as the biome is concerned, forget about it. It's not, in my opinion, unless you have a real problem caused by something that's broken in you, something that is not working like a healthy physiological human is supposed to work, it's not something that we need to even talk about or think about. And that's hard to do when so many of these people keep coming out with advice and what you need to do and what you need to take and what you need to supplement yourself with so that you can have the ultimate control over the different populations of, of these symbiotic bacteria that are in your gut. That's, uh, that's my thoughts on microbiome and in my opinion, it's how I do it, how I do it. And I look back at, at my life before carnivore and I look at my life after carnivore for two and a half years and I have done it the way that I do it. I have not ever once measured a ketone. I have not once ever given a thought to microbiome. I don't care what the scale says. It's irrelevant. I just feed myself the closest thing I can, I can find to what I know is what we're supposed to eat and what we've been eating for millions of years and let my body chemistry, my physiology, my genetic programming, let it control everything. And it does that not only second by second, but microsecond by micro second. There are some things in our bodies that happen thousands of times a second. Levels of things are red. Chemistry is adjusted accordingly. In every one of the trillions of cells in our body, we cannot get on top of that. The most powerful computer in the world still isn't as powerful as the human brain when it comes to regulating these things. And the cellular memory that doesn't even need the brain to regulate what's going on in its cell. So that's my answer to that question. It's a, it's a great question. Another great question, Steve. It comes up all the time, whether you take my advice or not, or you listen to some other YouTuber who's telling you how important the microbiome is and why you need this strain of bacteria because this strain of bacteria eats this and poops out that and that's beneficial and that's going to increase your your lifespan and all that stuff they are doing that usually to get clicks on youtube and affiliate commissions on the products that sponsor their videos maybe they got something maybe they don't i don't think it's worth screwing up your natural, your natural physiology to try to manipulate things at that level. That's, that's my opinion, my opinion. Hope that answers that question.